Oof, a little bit of headache going here, but I'm going to power through it. Um, you know, I, um, but, uh... Hello, and welcome to a new edition of True Audio Files. My name is Jim Carter, as usual. <laughs> so, today I want to talk about reissues, and most specifically non-audiophile reissues, although we'll talk about the audiophile ones because of the topic, and basically just covering whether or not non-audiophile reissues, you know, from like major labels, suck. You know, because a, a lot of, there's a lot of uh, people out there that just won't buy them because they think they're not worth it. And I'm here to talk about what I think about that. So, you know, when we talk about reissues, we're typically thinking about, at least if you're one of those audiophile types that where sound is the, well, one of the most important topics or one of the most important factors on purchasing a record, making sure you get the best sounding one, right? So that's where the audiophile reissue ones come into play because in many cases they're going to be well I, I would argue that almost almost every case they're going to be at least one of the better sounding releases they may not sound the same as the original pressing uh, and you know some people just may have that nostalgia for the better or not the better, I should say, but Freudian slip, the original pressing, or they just might flat out just like it overall in general, just because of how it's been, you know, EQ'd and compressed and things on that nature. So, because most audiophile reissues, they, or at least most of the ones that I have listened to, especially, most specifically, mobile fidelity ones, but all of them are kind of trending this way now too, is they tend to not mess with what's on the original master tapes or master recordings because, uh, well, I don't know why. Well, I know why, but the reason I say that is because it's pretty evident and, uh, and I've heard some of the mastering engineers say this as well. Their, their goal in the audio file labels is to get as close to the original master recording. And I stress original master recording because I wanna make sure that people understand this because it's been a, there's a huge post that blew up <laughs> in one of the Facebook groups I'm in about, you know, how MoFi may occasionally or often <laughs> you digitally transfer. They take the original master tape at the label's facility and digitize it to a high resolution file and then do the mastering and cutting onto the vinyl. And that just blew things up. <laughs> so it's uh, it's the original master recording, but more important, the other reason why I'm bringing it up, I kind of went off on a tangent there, is because the master recording could be a digital tape or it could be from a hard drive. It, but specifically, it's it could be a digital file that is the original master recording. So I wanted to stress that. So anyways, but their ultimate goal as an audiophile reissue labels, as from what I can see, at least of the most recent re reissues, is to try to capture what's on that master tape without embellishing on it much, if at all. And that could be good, that could be bad. It all depends on how they mastered that tape originally. Because uh, in a lot of cases... It's the original mix down from the multi-track masters that uh, they get. So, and in some cases, it's before it's been through its final mastering stage. There's been a few instances of that, like on MoFi, there's been a Faith No More record, Beck, Sea Change, uh, Megadeth, and a couple of others where they got the original master mix down of the t of the uh, a two-track mix down from the multi master multi track masters and try to say that three times fast uh, before they went to the final mastering stage and and it could, because in that final mastering stage in a lot of cases they add a lot of the EQ and compression and stuff like that so it makes it a completely different sounding recording for some that's better for some it's worse but regardless 
So again, kind of getting off on a tangent, but that's kind of the goal of the original master recording, or I should say the audio file reissues like MoFi, Analog Productions, uh, the Tone Poet series is kind of along those veins as well. So uh, now that is not going to be the case with you know regular label reissues. Generally speaking, they want to try to capture the sound that they feel makes it sound the best, and that may not be uh, you know, doing a flat transfer of the of the master. It may require a little bit of a boost in the bass or a little bit of a boost in the treble or maybe a little bit more compression or, or things like that. So that's kind of the distinction between the two, at least right now, in the current phase of new reissues, whether it's regular audio, regular or audiophile label. So now the question becomes, what sounds better to you? And, you know, there's going to be those people, especially the audiophiles who are looking for the purity and the, well, I don't want to say accuracy, because if you're listening to records, you're really not looking for accuracy, let's face it. You're looking for the experience and, in some cases, a pure analog chain, if you can get it, although it's pretty rare nowadays on a new reissue. So, it's just a question then of what your tastes are for sound. And a lot of people I know say they want no compression or a little bit of compression, but not much. But they don't realize that almost every, well, not almost, anything that's popular has compression in it. In some cases, a lot of compression. I mean, the Beatles is a prime example. They actually have quite a bit of compression uh, placed, added to their music. And I think it sounds great. Uh, I think if it didn't have it, it would not sound as good, in my opinion. And that's an, a, a subjective opinion, not an objective, uh, it, you know, it's, it may sound potentially sound more natural with the less compression, but anyways, so the bottom line is this, you know, a reissue can sound re really good, even from the, a major label. And, you know, I don't think I've rarely come across anything, at least recently that really sucked as a reissue. I've had some I've had a lot of them that definitely don't sound as good as maybe the original pressing or the audiophile label one, but quite frankly, in most cases, there's not a gigantic difference between them. And I would say if you're not fanatical about just getting the absolute best sounding recording, but you just want a good copy of it, the, the new reissues are actually a great way to go because they're going to be, in most cases, quite a bit more affordable and more plentiful so they're going to be easier to find uh, as opposed to maybe some of the audiophile reissues which seem to be getting sold out faster and faster now and maybe you know a first pressing of them that's been my experience with i've done a lot of ab comparisons and and yes in pretty much every case and there's been some exceptions but in almost every case i've found i've definitely preferred something over the newest non-audiophile reissue but quite frankly it's not a huge difference so if you're not sitting there concentrating on the music really listening deep into it and are not fanatical about getting the best possible sounding record release but you just want a copy of the music because you love the music and you don't want to spend a ton of money on it there's nothing wrong with any of these or I don't want to say any. I don't want to get myself in trouble because I'm sure there are exceptions. But I don't have a problem with any of the, most of the new reissues because they're all good. They're, like I said, in many cases not the best, but they're good. So I don't know. That's kind of my take. So, bottom line is this if you're not fanatical about just having the absolute best sounding version of the album, especially if it's an album that you like but you don't love, Go out and get the newest reissue that's out there. I'm sure in most cases you're going to be satisfied with it. Quite frankly, if you didn't know another one existed, you probably would be satisfied with it. I know that I have been in the past where, you know, I buy a reissue and I'm like, wow, that sounds really good. But then I listen to the audio file version and, or the original pressing. I'm like, oh, okay, well, that definitely sounds better. But the, the reissue still sounds really good. So bottom line is... You know, again, if it's not an album that you're absolutely in love with and have to have the best sounding version of, don't be afraid to buy that reissue because I think you'll be okay with it and you'll be happy with it. There may be an exception here and there, but you know, I wouldn't worry about it. You know, especially with 
you know, original pressings or early pressings going for sometimes two, three, four, five times the price or more than the reissue. For some people or for some releases, it just may not be worth that extra money. And uh, that's quite all right. And I, again, I think you'll just be satisfied if it's just a question of just being able to listen to that music that you like. So that's my take. I would really love to hear what you think about that. Have you guys had any bad reissues? And I'm not saying that they didn't sound as good as the audiophile or early pressing, but ones that just truly sounded bad. I'd love to hear your take in the comments section below and let me know if you've had any because... Off the top of my head, at least recent reissues, I can't say that I've had any that have been really bad. I mean, I have not been a fan of some of the music on vinyl ones, but they've had some good ones too. But overall, I've been relatively satisfied with any of the reissues that I've purchased recently. Uh, and, you know, if I don't need that album to, at the sound its greatest and I'm not really truly heavily into the album and love the album, then... The, the reissue is perfectly fine for me and my tastes. So, but let me hear what you have to say. So, uh, please like this video if you liked it, and subscribe to my channel if you want to see more of my videos. And hit that alert bell when you want to see about when my new videos come out. I would really appreciate it. I'm trying to shoot for that thousand subscriber range, and I'm starting to get on a closer and closer. But I would really love to get your help and liking and commenting and subscribing really helped my cause here. So thank you very much for your time and you have a great day.